The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, company live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. We got option expiration coming at you, and we got markets trading lower yet again. We got the S&Ps off almost 25 points, trading at 43.60. China in the news yet again, weighing on markets. We talked about some of these trend lines of where we were. S&P makes it to the low of that trend we were looking at yesterday. You could say it made an acceleration below that trend line, right? Where does that trend line fall? You might have just slammed through that trend line yesterday. Depending on where you line that up, maybe that was even a retest in terms of the bounce you got overnight. But nonetheless, we are lower by 25 points. NASDAQ 100, you're off by 125 points. Similar action right out of these trend lines. Uh, and that was quite a trend itself, but we are making new lows in pretty dramatic fashion. You get the Dow right now off 144 points. The Russell off by nine, trading at 1846. Boy, we got some action in yields. We got some action in commodities. Crude, we're trading at 79.11, testing the lows we had of Wednesday evening in that crude market. We're under $80. Let's jump over to the dollar index first. You get the dollar index, excuse me, we push a recent high. Like we were talking about yesterday, what do we have? We have a higher dollar. Look at the reversal of yield. So I was going to talk about the reprieve we were getting, but boy, just since I was looking at the charts at 8 o'clock this morning, I'm looking at the charts, I'm saying, I wonder if we're going to get 110 by the time I'm on the air at 9 o'clock in the morning. We had just come from basically 109 yesterday, so I'm saying, man, we're going to get a 110? Nope, just like that in the last hour, you drop off. We're talking about a 10-year yield still sitting at about 426 4.264 to be exact. So about four and a quarter percent, the yield on the 10 year right now, that's driving a lot of the action. And as I mentioned, the dollar index right now, basically where we were as a close yesterday, 103.50, but strength in the dollar continuing. And then you jump to, uh, that was the 10 year, excuse me, you jump to the 30 year, one more time. And look at the 30 year, man. We were just at 119.26, and boom, just like that, we're back to 119. So we got some volatility in bonds, man. We are one week out from Jackson Hole. Jackson Hole, a week from today, Friday, August 25th. Pretty remarkable. You come into basically summer trading after that. We're in summer trading, as in that's the end of the summer. That's real summer trading when you're talking about coming into uh, Labor Day weekend. Is that right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Labor Day is the 4th. Yes, it is. Monday, September 4th is Labor Day, so markets will be closed for that. And what are we? Yeah, we're two weeks out from that. And folks, if you know anywhere in the Northeast, right, final two weeks of the summer, I mean, Florida, we were already in our second week of school. But in most situations, you're coming into Labor Day, final two weeks, especially the final week of August, et cetera. Nonetheless, we'll see if we get some quiet markets. We're going to be out from a Fed meeting, but we do get Jackson Hole August 25th, and maybe that's kind of the last bout before we get some light volatility. And don't mistake the fact that, um, excuse me, some light volume. We get some light markets in terms of volume, participants, final two weeks of August, people taking a couple of vacations, maybe to Cape Cod, maybe to the Hamptons. Uh, this weekend's the Falmouth Road Race, man. Many, many good childhood memories and even adult memories in Cape Cod. I was at the Falmouth Road Race four years ago, folks. Ran the road race four years ago. That was an awesome time. Never thought I'd do that. Um, and very thankful I did because you never know what's going to happen. Take advantage of those opportunities because what happens? I run it in August of 2019 uh, and there was no road race the next year, right? Because of COVID. So keep that stuff in mind, man. You got opportunities, get it done. Uh, and then, of course, I have a son. Becomes a little bit difficult as well, but we're going to get back up there. Maybe next summer, uh, escape some of the heat. And look at this. As we're talking, you got the 30 year back to about 119 right now. And we jump over to the 10-year right now. We're trading at 109.18, but we were just pushing almost 110. All right, what do we got going on? 
Let's kick things off with the Wall Street Journal headline, Investors Fear China's Lehman Moment is Looming. Lots of headlines out there on China, man. You, you jump over to Bloomberg. Story out here, China steps up the efforts to stabilize markets. Looks like they're a little bit worried, man. Confidence slumps. The funds asked not to sell stocks. Banks are supposed to prop up the yuan. The Hang Seng, only down 8% this year. I was reading this this morning, and I said, man, that is not fear. That is not a Lehman moment. The Hang Seng's down just 8% this year. It's August 18th, folks. That is not a Lehman moment in terms of being priced into that market and how it could reverberate. Um, but yeah, China, they're trying to do everything they can, and they won't be able to stem it if things really get out of whack, as we always see. So you jump from there, and then the journal. The big trust companies, they're missing payments, right? You have the big developer going BK recently. I'm sure that's in this article. I think that was last night. And that was more of an when moment, not an if, in terms of that developer going BK. I'm sure they mention it somewhere in this article as well. But nonetheless, so we got China trading lower. You jump over to Asia right now. You have the Hang Seng down 2% right now. Shanghai down a full percent right now. Nikkei down about half a percent. Over in Europe right now, we got the DAX down about 1.2%. FTSE off 1.2%. CAC roll off 1.2%. Uh, so our market's not quite down 1.2% yet. We're only down 25 points. We'll see where we go, but breaking those lows. Now, you put that on a daily, just going back a year. That was the channel line I was looking at. We've actually broken below that. We're trading at 43.60 right now. That is basically the beginning of the gap. Begins at 43.48, and that's the gap from June 12th when you jap gapped above what is now the 382. So we're talking about 4320, which correlates to 4325 is the fill of that gap going back to June 9th. Let's see if there's anything even back a little bit further than that. We're going to run into some resistance right now, right? Well, we get the highs of August of last year. Check it out to the T. That high 4327, okay? 4327. And then we got 4320 on the 382, and we got 4325 as a fill of the gap. So 4320 to 4330, something like that. You're talking about 20 to 30 points from where we're at right now. We got options op expiration going on today as well. We'll talk about that a little later in the program uh, as we go forward. Yeah, and let's look at that China article. Why not? And this is what I was talking about. Evergrande. They filed for bankruptcy protection. Chapter 15, I guess, is... Uh, Yes, Chapter 15, Bankruptcy Protection, Manhattan Bankruptcy Court. Some of the numbers, I saw a tweet out last night, man, saying they lost like 80 billion. Yeah, yeah, here it is. In July, Evergrande posted a combined loss of $81 billion over the past two years after struggling to finish projects and repay suppliers and lenders. Net loss for 2001-2022, $66.3 billion dollars and $14.76 billion, respectively, over 80. That's over $81 billion. Uh, so that was not a shocker, but nonetheless, you lose $81 billion over two years, you got some problems, and China's got some problems right now, man. And the market's paying attention to that. Our yields are a whole different story that we have going higher. You know, I woke up this morning, I said, okay, that was it, right? We, we, re we hit some recent highs in terms of yields recently. We hit 109.03. You're within a few pennies of where we were trading at in October of last year. Maybe we get a bounce, but boy, that bounce is pulling back. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Lots to talk about on Friday. Options expiration. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P off about 24 points right now, trading at 43.60. We put that back to a five-minute chart, just off the lows we had at about 8:45 a.m. this morning. As I mentioned, options expiration Friday, so uh, we could see some fireworks with about 2.2 trillion dollars, I believe, is the number. I'm going to find the article I was reading this morning on Bloomberg. I think it's something like 2.2 trillion dollars of options are expiring. But we'll get into that a little bit later in the program because the one thing that's remarkable, folks, nowadays is that when you talk about the value that you are controlling in equities with options, it is magnified by like a hundred times and sometimes even more than that in terms of, you know, if you're buying an option for a dollar, okay, and this is a tease as we're going to get into this later, we'll really do some of the math. But if you buy an option for a dollar that controls a hundred shares of an equity, and that equity is trading at multiples of a dollar already you're magnified that by almost a hundred times if you're trading at a hundred versus one and i know that's quick math it doesn't do justice to the numbers and we'll talk about that later in the program uh i do want to talk about story a little near and dear to me deerfield academy so I was very fortunate, folks, growing up, my dad believes in education like nothing, and I believe in it as well. And I was very fortunate to go to an amazing school, Noble and Greeno, in Dedham, Massachusetts. And boy, if you are looking for an outstanding school, folks, uh, it's a private school, very expensive. They do offer tuition assistance. Some of the money that these schools have, man, competes with some of the best schools in terms of colleges out there. I found this story interesting up on Bloomberg this morning. Deerfield Academy is raising $89 million to build a dining hall. Remarkable, man. Um, they're basically small colleges, folks, but I can tell you myself, I was so fortunate, went to Nobles from middle school and high school, so six years, um, and I'll bring up Nobles in a second as well. The years that I felt myself that you were able to transform yourself, learn, become an adult, um, educate yourself, become from a child to an adult human being, when I got to Villanova University, again, so fortunate to go there, 
I learned a tremendous amount more, I believe, in my middle school and especially high school years than in college, which was more about a life experience scenario and growing up to really become an, uh, you know, a self-sufficient adult to that degree. It was also um, an awesome time, period, right? Very fortunate to be able to spend four years at an institution like that, made some amazing friends, um, joined a great fraternity, Alpha Tau Omega. But so $89 million, just go on over some of these numbers, okay? They have an endowment, $791 million as of June 30th, 2022. That would put it among the top 100 richest U.S. colleges if measured against institu institutions of higher education. And listen, folks, it's not gloating. I know I'm so fortunate, okay? And these schools, they're so expensive. And of course, you know, the richest people, powerful people out there, they try and get their kids in there. There's a lot of tuition assistance that comes from these types of endowments as well, where they provide a vast amount of tuition because the tuition at these schools, folks, runs $60,000, something like that a year these days. Wasn't quite that level when I was going there from 1992-93 to 1998, uh, but still remarkable. We played Deerfield in some of our sporting um, events. Here's the other thing I'll say as we tangent a bit okay one of the most amazing things of going to noble and greeno nobles in denham massachusetts they require you to participate in three different um team sports events um theater um you can join clubs right every season you have to do an activity and then when you're in middle school that's three sports and i thought that was so crucial man you know you don't need to go to one of these schools to get your kids involved in activities when you're young most of the time that's doing some type of, whether it's playing soccer, um, they have all the kids playing every sport, right? So you don't have to be a stud. What it teaches you is, is hanging out with the children, right? Forming those relationships when all the kids in the classes are playing sports together, it builds a relationship that you don't have just by sitting in a classroom and you can build those as well. When you get later into high school, those activities include clubs like drama, et cetera. You don't have to play a sport, but you have to do something. You have to do an activity beyond just going to school. That was one of the most crucial things that I thought was amazing, that you had to play a sport or do an activity every single season. Because um, otherwise, what do kids do, right? They get home from school at 2.30, 3 o'clock. Maybe they eat some snacks. Maybe they watch some TV. Hopefully, they go outside and play with their friends. Nonetheless, that is one of the most amazing parts is how they get you involved in all these activities. Tuition is bonkers, man. Now, this is just going back from 2019, and this is talking about boarding, okay? Now, at Nobles, they have five-day boarding out there. And Nobles, I mean, I pulled it up. I, I checked it. Now, this is, it's at a glance, man. You know, I, I'm just promoing this amazing school because I think it was one of the most, you know, formative years of my life, changed my life in dramatic fashion. This is the middle school that I went to. This is John Gifford. He's the head of the middle school right now. He was a teacher when I was there, which is pretty cool. And man, the head of the middle school when I was back there, a man by the name of Tim Carey, he was at Nobles Forever. He was an awesome, awesome guy. Very fortunate. Um, and looking at some of these, okay, to talk about the dining hall, why not? We'll promote my school because please check it out, folks. And if you think you can't afford it, OK, listen, they have all types of income tuition assistance at these schools. That's what these endowments do. Now, here's the kicker. Look at this beautiful castle we have in Nobles. OK, this is a glance. Now, you talked about the dining hall. This dining hall was not around when I was there, uh, but this is the dining hall at Nobles now. So when you talk about when they say eighty nine million dollars, I mean, these are structures, folks, that have been around forever in terms of our dining hall is this castle function here in Nobles over the fields. Pretty remarkable experience, to say the least. Now, the numbers, I think I had it, right? Was this the one? Yeah, so 630 total students at Nobles, 518 in the upper school, about 110 in the middle school. So seventh and eighth grade, you're looking at about 50 to 60 kids per class. In the upper school, you're looking at about 110 to 120. So they expand the class by basically doubling it. And yeah, day tuition, pretty remarkable. $60,000, five-day boarding, 66. Uh, paying that type of tuition, okay? I enjoy it. You know, you put your kid through high school and middle school, and middle school is a small break of that. Yeah, what are you talking about, man? You're talking about 360, 400 grand. So I get the scenario, folks, that that is cash, okay, that you could buy your 12, 13 year old a $400,000 house practically, okay, to the same degree. And there's a lot of merit to that conversation as well. So I'm not telling you to go out there and spend that money. I know it is an absurd amount of money. It was not at this level. When it was, when I was back there, it was still obviously uh, a lofty level. But as 
colleges have risen, these have risen in lockstep, man. And it is the best investment you can make, for sure. Uh, but when you start talking about $400,000 for high school, man, there's opportunity costs that go along with that. So I get that to a certain degree, but boy, it was a very um, informative, and I really felt, which a lot of people don't realize, I think, is that those years are so much more informative and, um, and, and they shape you more than college when people are used to spending so much money for college these days. And I say I went to Villanova and that was great. But boy, Nobles um, was the one that really changed me in a in pretty dramatic fashion. And yeah, so they talk about this one, um, Phillips Exeter, right? Do they even mention it? I didn't even make it to the bottom of this one. They got Lawrenceville School, New Jersey, 76. Yeah, I guess what they, um, they're talking about boarding schools in here. But boy, it was amazing. We had a great hockey team. Um, a lot of amazing times out there. So opportunity, if you're looking for an outstanding school in the New England area, folks, I'm biased. I know I am. Uh, Noble and Greeno, data mass. All right, we're coming back. We're talking markets. We got the S&P off by 27. And thanks so much to my dad for sending me there, man, and my mom, because uh, that was awesome. You talked about a sacrifice, for sure. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back to the market. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. we got markets open, and you're pushing the pre-market session lows with the S&P off 31 points right now. We jump back to that chart. Trading at 43.52, we did just spike that low on the open at 43.50, and the S&P is off by 7 tenths percent. I mentioned Europe right now off about 1.2 percent. Uh, China, a little worse than that even, depending where you are. NASDAQ 100 off about 9 tenths percent. We get the Dow off 4 tenths percent, and the Russell off 9 tenths percent as well. So a quick example, jumping around. Let's let's jump around to yields real quick before uh, see how we're opening up. Yeah, 10-year pulls back a bit, 109.18 right now. We jump over to the dollar index. We get the dollar index backing off from those highs of 103.68. We're at 103.51 right now. So I mentioned talking about in terms of the dollar value of the options that are expiring. I think I saw somewhere out there, just trying to find the article on Bloomberg, and maybe I'm, I'm going to try again at the next break. I had it up this morning. I was reading it early, talking about the value of of options that are expiring today and the wall of options that are expiring and in my head I was just thinking man this is so exaggerated sometimes when they talk about the value of the options expiring versus the underlying value of what those options represent now some of them can be very correlated as in if you have a deep in the money option right then the market value of that option versus the underlying equities that you're controlling are pretty closely aligned because you're so deep in the money but a quick example to give you, and I've talked about these short-term options before. They call them zero days to expiration or zero DTE options, okay? But just to illustrate, sometimes what you can control for an equity versus what you're actually putting up for a cost of an option, here's a quick example, okay? We're going to walk through it. It's going to take a couple minutes, but pay attention, man, because it teaches you a thing or two about the zero days to expiration options as well and who was it that just came out yesterday i think it was goldman saying that the zero dtes are part of the reason the market's pulling back guess what folks they're just a new element if they were part of the reason it's pulling back then they were part of the reason that it was going up okay and nobody was out there crying at that point they are a part of the market at this point that's like saying that um, short sellers are a reason the market's going down of course they are buyers sellers in the market <coughs> but the leverage is what should be talked about and should be understood okay so here's the spy s p 500 etf trading right now at 434 pretty much on the dot we'll call it okay you jump over to the trade tab on the thinkorswim platform we're in the spy we take a look at the options expiring today they call it zero dtes because those are till days until the last trading day and there's your zero okay so we get zero days to expiration they expire at the close today and if you jump over and look at this market, it's bouncing a bit. So now we're almost at 434.50, okay? But let's just look at the 434 call. We're about 40 cents in the money, but it costs us a dollar. Let's just, we're ballparking numbers here, all right? We're looking at, sorry, that's a put, excuse me. Perfect, 434 call is on the left side here. Here's your bid ask, 434. It's at about a buck 50, okay? Now we have about 50 cents of intrinsic value, and then we have about a dollar in premium. And on the zero days to expiration options, folks, you can tell real quickly what you're paying in premium by looking at the theta, which is how much you're gonna get a decay of premium. And the reason why it's so correlated is because if this option stays where it is for the day, you will lose a buck 10 because that's all premium and it expires at the end of the day, all right? But here's the last kicker. Options trade in 100 share uh, lots, okay? So if you're buying something for a dollar and you buy one option contract, you're paying about $140 right now, right? You're paying about $140. And your delta here is 52 cents. So basically, you're getting 50% of the movement of the underlying index right now. So if the S&P goes up 50 cents, the price of this option is probably going to go up 25 cents, right? So you have a delta of about 50. I'm ballparking all these numbers, okay? So... Last part of this conversation is how much do you put up for one options contract? You put up $141, which is 100 shares of this option, which cost $1.40. You multiply $1.40 times 100, you're at $140. You've put up $140. That's all you've put up, one option contract. You now own the right to buy 100 shares of the SPY ETF at 434. Well, what does that control? Well, that controls 434 times 100, right? Which is, yeah, $43,400 of control 
in terms of the underlying equity. So put that in context, folks. What did you just do? You just put up $140 to control equities that are worth $43,400. Now, <clears throat> what is <clears throat> percentage-wise, that's 310 times on your money, okay? But you gotta do it percentage-wise, which you add a couple zeros to make it a percentage, that would make it 31,000% in terms of you're controlling 43,400 for a $140 investment, okay? So when they say that there's $2.2 .2 trillion of options expiring today, I'm gonna pull this over now, okay? That's what $2.2 .2 trillion looks like, right? There's your million, there's your billion, there's your trillion, okay? And you're gonna divide that by 310 to show you that that's just $7 billion if you're doing the same type of multiple that could be out there today. Still a big number, okay? Now, here's the kicker of the zero day to expiration options though, to back it up for one more thing. You put up $140 to control a call option that has a 434 strike price. So you have 100 shares of this equity, which is trading at $434. So if you wanted to buy 100 shares of the SPY, you would have to put up $43,400, right? No, you only gotta put up $140. And then you'd say, well, hold on though, that's just an option, right? You're not really getting the full movement of the underlying. No, you're not, you're correct. You're getting what? You're getting 50% of the movement, 54%, 55 now to be exact, right? Your delta is 54 or 55. So that means the underlying can move and this option will move about half of the value. Well, then what do you do? So then what you do is you say, okay, so I'm controlling $43,400 worth of equities by entering this option, but I'm only getting 50% of the action. So what are you really controlling versus the equities? Well, you're still controlling, what, $21,500, $21,700 to be exact. $21,700 of equities is the exposure you're getting in the SPY by putting up $140, right? Yeah. Uh, so when you hear sometimes the value of the options that are expiring, I said $2.2 .2 trillion, right? And then my head started to go, I said, wait a second, man. They're talking about the value of the underlying equities that they are controlling. And when you look at the value of the options, and folks, this is an extreme example, okay, of a zero days to expiration option that is almost at the money or, or near the money. And like I mentioned, there's a lot of options contracts, for instance, where you have most of the value built into that option that you control. But still, it's a multiple of a multiple, and those numbers skew uh, pretty dramatically. But that's a quick lesson, man. When you talk about why people love these, you can see it, okay? You get in there, you're controlling 100 shares of an equity trading at $435, and what do you put up for that cost? You put up 150 bucks, pretty remarkable. All right, folks, we got markets in negative territory. We bounce a bit on the open. Uh, stay tuned, we'll go over some of the individual equities that are moving on this Friday. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, 
the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps off about 22 points right now. We jump around to some of the commodities. We jump over to crude right now. Whoops. Back above 80 bucks, right? Check out that move, man. From 9 o'clock in the morning, we were trading at 79 and change just like that. Crude up about a buck 40. You jump over to the dollar index. Not surprising. We get quite the pullback in that same time frame, right? 8.30, we're at 103.68. You dive to about 103.47. So you have a little bit of weakness in the dollar just in the last hour or so. That's putting a bid under the crude contract. You jump over to gold. Slight bid, but nothing like we had in crude, right? Gold trading at 1921. You're up by six dollars right now. We keep our eye on yields. The 10-year right now back to 109.18, basically pulling back to where we were at the start of yesterday. You dive down to 109.03. We move almost a full point up to almost a 110 handle, and just like that, we're back to yesterday morning in terms of the 10-year with a yield of about four point. I think we're at 4.26. Let's see where we are as we jump around because we've got some movement that's where we were in the beginning of the year yeah 4.26 percent the yield on the 10-year that's a pretty attractive risk-free rate of return over the next 10 years man it's going to be some competition for the market going forward to say the least all right let's see how darden's doing because we have the headline out there yeah, interesting you know i pulled this headline up Saw it as I was starting off the program. I said, Darn's really not moving. Why are they talking about their moving? Outback Steakhouse owner stock rises after activist starboard value buys stake. They own 9.9%, just shy of that 10% number. But there's no real movement on Darden right now. No real movement at all. You check it out, right? We're trading at 158.58 right now for Darden restaurants, down about 20 cents on the session. We've pulled back recently. Check out the daily off the highs about 173. I talked about Olive Garden recently um, earlier in the week. If you didn't catch the program, folks, Olive Garden in Lakeland, Florida, man, they got no soda. They got no carbonation. They got no Pinot Grigio. Uh, they got some issues over there. That's in my piece. Okay, what else we got going on, folks? Well, we got an awesome webinar coming up next Wednesday. We got our man Basil Chapman of the Tiger Technicians Hour in the opening call. He's up live next at 10 o'clock, of course. He has put together a a webinar for his subscribers to the opening call. So here's the deal. This is free for opening call subscribers. If you're already a subscriber, you got nothing to do. Uh, you will gain access to this webinar, a 90 minute webinar live with Basil this Wednesday, four till 5.30 p.m. The power of the 914 moving average and under other indicators in the Chapman Wave methodology. Basil's had some great calls, folks. Um, peg the top in the Dow. He's gonna be talking about what he's been following, what gave him some of those indicators that he uses, like the moving average, like the Chapman wave, what he used to peg that top. He wants to talk about that trade because it went so well. I encourage you to check it out. 
All you got to do is sign up for the opening call. And the best part is if you're a new subscriber, you get a 30 day money back guarantee and please take advantage of it. All right. That's the best part. People sometimes they'll cancel say, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I didn't say don't apologize. Thank you for signing up and giving it a chance. So give Basil a chance, man. Sign it up. You gain access to the opening call right away. Basil always sends out updates over the weekend to his subscribers as well. Uh, I know he's out there in the Tiger's Den right now, but yeah, he usually sends a um, video, Saturday video, folks, for the opening call. You get it all. You get the 90-minute webinar. If you haven't checked it out, uh, great time to sign up for the opening call. He'll be up next. Um, yeah, as he'll be in there, the power of the 914 moving average. Yeah, I will be in there as well this Wednesday. Can you believe August 23rd is this Wednesday? Uh, but don't delay. Sign up now. That way you gain access to the newsletter. You check out his weekend video. You gain access to the opening call every morning, and then you're in there Wednesday night as well. All right, let's check out some of the FANG stocks, see how we're kicking off the trading session. Amazon, giving back all those gains from the earnings, man. You're back to 132. You're off 1.2% right now. You jump over to the big dog, Apple. It's not stopping for Apple, man. Off another nine tenths percent. When are they going to buy Disney? No, I kid. Disney off another two tenths percent right now. We jump over to Nvidia shares. Nvidia off two point three percent. Now Nvidia. There you go. They're out with their numbers August twenty third. So you know what's going to be happening, man. I think they're out after the bell. How cool is that? So Basil's webinar. You're going to get some Nvidia earnings Wednesday after the bell, August twenty third, I believe. Uh, Nvidia. That that should be. I mean, can they live up to the hype, man? You're still $120. You're still 40% above where you were trading at on their last earnings, let alone starting the year at 150. You talk about optimism uh, priced into this market. You jump over to Microsoft. Look at these stocks, man. You get the NASDAQ 100 right now off about 8 tenths percent. Jump over to Tesla. Boy, the Magnificent 7, man. That might be the end of the Magnificent 7. Tesla just traded from 300 to 215, right? You got Apple with 16 billion shares that's off... $26. What are we talking about? 26. That's two, That's about $400 billion. That's more. That's $400 $420 billion. Why not? We'll call it 420 the market that Apple has shaved off their market cap. I mean, these are big moves, man. Yeah, you're at $2.7 billion. You were at about, excuse me, $2.7 trillion. You were approaching $3.1 trillion on Apple shares. Remarkable numbers when you think about that. That's why people talk about maybe they could buy Disney. They just lost $400 billion in market cap. And meanwhile, Disney right now is trading with a market cap of 157 Can't find a bit. Yeah, maybe they'll just take over ESPN as we talked about yesterday. Uh, Dan Ives over at Wedbush talking about. They've talked about that for a while though, folks. All right, let's talk a little bit of Hurricane. Watch out for Hillary. Can be more things than one, but this time it's a hurricane. Uh, intensifies as storm charts path to California. And boy, yeah, these headlines catch my eye, folks, because we got some hot weather all across the country, all across the, gl the globe right now. And water temperatures, okay? I'm going to see if I can find some articles during this next break coming up. The water temperatures going on right now are five to seven degrees hotter, some areas in Florida. That is worrisome as we come into hurricane season. It's just starting. This one's out in California. Hopefully it doesn't do anything too alarming out there. But nonetheless, you get Hurricane Hillary as we're going to start seeing those headlines, unfortunately. And we'll see where we go from there. But yes, boy, we got some um, some hot, hot waters, to say the least. And we work. I would stay away from this one, man. They plan a one for 40 reverse stock split to save the listing uh, on the New York Stock Exchange. Shares fell as much as 24% to $0.12 cents in pre-market trading. What is their symbol? Let's see. Is that going to link us to them or the NYSE? No, that links us to the NYSE. Where's WeWork? Why isn't it linked? Is it delisted? Maybe somebody knows. Does somebody know what that? Let's see if it comes up here. Up oh, there it is, 12 pennies. All right, we're going 41, 40 for one reverse split. With this equity, man. Folks, remember this chart. Don't catch a falling knife. My goodness. And look at all the little bounces you got, right? From 450 to six bucks. That's a 33% pop right there that week, okay? Before you traded from six down to two. Then what did you do? 188 up to 271. What is that? That's a 50% acceleration if you caught that move right. 
Well, if you caught it wrong, then you traded from 270 down to a buck 06. Then what'd you do? You go from a buck 02 to 235, 235% return to peg the beginning of the year. And then what happened? Well, then you went from 235 down to 12 cents. Remember that one, folks. Um, yeah, that business. Stay away. All right, folks, one more segment. Stay tuned. We're coming back. It's Friday, options expiration. Don't go away. I'll be right back. And don't forget about our man, Basil. Go check out the front page of TFNN. He's coming up next. You can sign up for the opening call. You'll be subscribed by the time he's on the air at 10 o'clock. We'll be right back for one more segment, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets bouncing a bit off the lows. We made it to 43.50. We're 17 points off those lows right now at 43.67. The one thing I'll keep my eye on, folks, is kind of that channel line that's somewhat. Now, this bottom trend line in the channel, okay, you can draw this onto your chart. We're just taking the highs we had basically rolling over. How about it, right? We talked about it yesterday, about midnight on August 1st. You roll into that. We've hit lower lows and lower highs since that area, getting a little bit outside of there. But you can line up that bottom line wherever you want. The thing I'm going to say is, Maybe we come back, we test that line. That's where I'd looking for it. As maybe you come back, you test that line up there. Okay, and jumping back to some of the articles. So here's the one I was talking about in terms of, boy, if you are anywhere that you're 
in the path of hurricanes. Be safe this season, okay? Because some of the water temps that are out there, this article talks about some of it. And the one thing I just wanted to get here in terms of where they're talking about, surface, <clears throat> excuse me, surface temps around the Keys have been averaging about 91 degrees, well above the normal mid-July average of 85. That is insanity to have a six degree difference. And I tell you folks, man, I went to the beach last Tuesday, last Tuesday, day before school was back in session for the afternoon. Uh, unbearable, the water, I felt like I was jumping in a jacuzzi, no lie. Felt like I was jumping in a jacuzzi, did not cool you at all. We stayed for a bit. Uh, Tommy's cheeks were bright red like a lollipop. We had to get out of there and cool off in the AC in the car. Uh, it was fun, but the water temps, <clears throat> I had never, <clears throat> excuse me, felt water like that. And we were in a very shallow area. So that water especially, right? But you don't have to go far. Now these articles were all coming basically at the end of July. That's before we've had heat in August, right? With Florida ocean temps topping 100. So hopefully the coral can withstand it, man. And we finish up with the last two articles as we come in. Bank of America warns of a 5% world, sinks in with yields pushing higher. Folks, it's not going to be surprising if the yields of past days are behind us. That's the 10-year we are breaking to higher yields. And the last part, economists lift U.S. growth forecast, sees the Fed higher for longer. There's a little bit of a repricing going on on these yields, man. So keep your eye on those yields uh, and stay tuned. Basil Chapman coming up next, folks, with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Don't forget about his opening call, subscriber webinar. Have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend. I look forward to seeing you back here on Monday, folks. Stay tuned for Basil coming up now. Have a great one.